So the last time we we ended, uh, we were I think we had I think four out of five green check marks on our project on Amazon. We're getting close to actually releasing it on Amazon. So I'm going to load up the web browser again, and I will go back to the Amazon Developers Portal to see what else I need there. We had one more tab that we needed to fill in. So if you recall, the address is developer.amazon.com. Go to developer.amazon.com. Now, on the top right, you're going to click to sign in. We created the account last time, and we're going to sign in. We can create multiple accounts for, for to be an Amazon developer. That's fine. You just need to tie it to a different email address. And what I had done was I created a completely fake uh, email address just to get in and be able to do this. So that reminds me, I need to pull up my email address. Uh, if you're doing this for real, uh, everything that we edited or created is editable. But I'm going to sign in last time. Go ahead and click sign in at the top right. It'll ask you for your email and password. You are a returning customer, so you should use your same password from last time. And so I'm back at the um, at the main developer uh, console here, as we saw previously, no new updates and such. At the bottom, I see that I do have this app that I've started to add. It's not ready yet, but here I would get, like I said, at a glance, all the download data and that sort of thing. This is an app I haven't finished yet. So obviously I would not click add a new app. I'm not done with this one yet. So what I would do is at the top tab, I've got dashboard and I've got apps and services. I'm still working on my app, so click on that one at the top. It lists my current app in progress. Current version is not submitted. It's not done yet. So that'll tell me there when, it, when it's eventually available for people. If you click on the name of the of the app, it'll take you to edit it. But before that, if you also notice, there's a little gear at the end of the row there. If you hover over there, you have other options. Uh, simply clicking on the name of the app will let you edit the current version. And then here's other things such as such as live app testing and using game circle, device messaging, so all this uh, other extra stuff. Device messaging is related to, that's what they call um, uh, notifications. If your app is, um, your app, your app, um, Oh, no. Uh, this should be the notifications such as the app uh, makes, um, you know how you're using your device and then at the top you get a, you get a notification that tells you, uh, you know, a uh, new follower. Let's say you've got Facebook or Twitter and it pops up to tell you you've got a new follower on Twitter. Those are those device messaging uh, notifications for your app. For us, we're still working on this project, so just go ahead and click on it to continue to edit it. And in any of these screens, if you want to go back and make changes, you have to click on the edit screen. After we've got a green check mark to further edit, you have to click edit. Well, we're on images and multimedia. We were able to do the rest of them, and that's what we're going to do next here. Yes? Before you go on, can you go to the binary files tab then? Mm -hmm. And uh, where the binary file is named in the package. Mm -hmm. Does that have to match the config.xml file? Yes, and it does it for you. As soon as we upload the binary file, it reads your config information, and it sees that, and it puts it there. 
So we actually cannot change that. That gets read from our APK file. Okay, so we're going to continue to work with um, with our with with the various aspects of our of our app. Let's look at the images and multimedia. Uh, there's some required, and then there's some optional. So I'm going to make a couple notes right here. We need to create a an icon, a small icon for our for our project, and it says 114 by 114 pixels. So we're going to need to load up Photoshop again for a little while. I'm making a note. I need a 114 pixel PNG file with transparency. I'm going to need a 512 pixel <coughs> squared one, also with transparency. Um, it's asking for screenshots. We want to display to the user kind of like preview images of what does our app look like to hopefully entice them to download the app, so we're going to need to create screenshots. We talked about that a while ago, over a month ago, so that'll be a good refresher to do it again. But we're going to need at least three uh, screenshots, pings or JPEGs, and notice these sizes here. I'm going to make a note of just one of them, at least 800 by 480. If I include these larger ones, uh, it's for higher quality devices. Amazon Fire TV screenshots not required. It doesn't have the little red asterisk, so it's not required. And anyway, I'm not even targeting Amazon uh, Fire devices, Fire TV devices, because when we saw over here somewhere on availability, I believe, we saw somewhere here that our that our project is not quite optimized for for Fire TV. So we're going to skip that one. We have this one that's recommended. But I'm going to say we should do it because these assets that Amazon is asking for, uh, Google also asks us for. So if eventually you do create the Google Developer account and want to publish your app there, it's going to ask you for these anyway. And Google now has made this image required. So we might as well create it for Amazon because if we want to go over to uh, Google Play, we'll have it ready. So this one is a, a wide... 1024 by 500 pixel, so it's landscape only. What's also optional is a video, up to five videos in just about any format. Uh, but if the video is larger than 150 megabytes, it asks you to upload it in a different way. We're not going to uh, create the video, but I'll show you some resources if you'd like to create videos. So this can be done in different ways when we get to the video, but it might be nice to actually have like a, a quick, you know, 10 second, 30 second, whatever long video of you showing how your app works. Uh, this can be like a commercial, this can be very complex with music and all of that, but we'll get to the video later. So our big task is then we have to create these assets, um, which require some sort of graphic software. We can't proceed from here unless we have graphics. So I'm going to minimize this, and let's go to the Start menu, and let's launch Photoshop. We have Photoshop on these computers, so we'll use it, not Elements. Although we can accomplish the same with Photoshop Elements, we want plain old Photoshop. Let's open Photoshop. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. This will be relatively straightforward because it's telling us we need to provide these graphics in these dimensions and formats, and then we're done. Um, this particular project, I was looking through my files, and I guess I didn't save it. I didn't save my original Photoshop files for the icon of this app, but it's one of the built-in icons to Photoshop, so we'll, we'll find it. We'll find it again. Let's start Photoshop. Let's go to the File menu. Select New. Let's switch here. We've got Width and Height in Inches. Switch those to Pixels. 
And we're going to start off with 512 by 512 pixels, 72 resolution. Um, Amazon and Google will ask us for various sizes of our, of our icons. And it's, as we talked about a while ago last month, uh, it's a good idea to start with the larger sized versions of your pictures and then if they need to be shrunk down uh, you will not suffer quality loss as the opposite would be what if you started with a small graphic 100 pixels and blew it up to 500 pixels that would lose quality we get fuzzy it would get blurry and pixelated but if we start with a larger image and scale it down it shouldn't lose uh, quality Background contents, we might as well here select also transparent. Because it's asking us for the sizes. Why did I choose 72? That's just standard practice uh, for web graphics. 72 pixels per inch. Just confirm that you've got these settings. 512 pixels, not inches. Don't leave that on inches. 512 pixels, 512 pixels height, 72 resolution and background contents transparent and then click OK because I remember we worked on this uh, a version of this last month and I can't seem to find it we're gonna create it one more time and before we get too much further let's go to file menu save as let's save this as our work in progress file when we worked with Photoshop last month, remember this software is great because it allows us to work on our it allows us to work on our project and save all of the layers and all of the settings, and then eventually we'll save it as the final PNG file. But here I'm going to select first to put it on my flash drive. <coughs> it wants a name. We'll call this uh, app icon. Dot PSD. We want to keep this as the Photoshop document, PSD, the work in progress file. And then eventually we will export so that we save it as ping. Go ahead and save that as dot PSD app icon. Doesn't the name doesn't quite matter. Just save it as dot PSD. It might ask about maximize compatibility. Just click OK. That's saying, would you like this to be, would you like to be able to open this file in earlier versions of Photoshop? It looks like we've got the, the latest version here. So if you go home and you've got an earlier version, our version might not open up unless you leave on maximize compatibility. So click OK. And the way we did this, the way we designed our icon, you know, it wasn't that we had a great artistic ability and we drew those those kids walking with their books and stuff. There was a built-in icon that we could use. So let me remind you where that's at. We have all of these tools on the left side. Select this one that's a square. That's the square the rectangle tool. It's above the hand, not the one that has a gradient. The one that is solid above the hand below the black arrow direct select tool click on the rectangular tool click and hold it if you just click it it'll select to draw squares you want to click and hold it so that the icon drawer opens and then you can select custom shape tool this is where we've got a bunch of cool built-in high quality icons custom shape tool. So it's like a little splat. Select that. And now at the top, on the options bar, uh, near the end here it says shape, and the shape that's selected is an arrow. Click the down, the drop down there, that triangle. Click on that. Then click on the gear. And here's where all of our icons are our, our, our icon sets. I want to select all. Give me all the icons. It's in there somewhere. I don't remember what set it's in, but I'll just select all. 
and then when it asks you to replace, click OK. And then somewhere in here, you're going to find the icon of those kids, those students. Right there. Officially called school. That's our school icon. Click on that. And if you click and drag, you'll draw the shape. If you click and drag, you'll be able to draw the shape to change your color. Obviously, at the top, it says fill the shape with a color. You can choose any color if you'd like. You can also go up here to Gradients, maybe. Patterns, I guess. Do that. So at the top, you can go with solid shapes, gradients, patterns, mix your own color. Now you do have this whole canvas to work with. So make your icon fill as much of it as possible because if I were to draw it like this, I've got a bunch of empty space and therefore when this gets shrunk down as an actual icon on my device, it's going to be off-center, it's going to look weird, it's going to shrink down pretty oddly. So what I'm saying here is draw this so that it fills the whole area. Uh, if you want to redraw it, you can, of course, go to Edit, Undo, and try again. Or, if you draw it and it doesn't, isn't quite the right size, you can go up to Edit, Free Transform Path, and that will f further let you grab the corner so you can grow it or shrink it. It's under Edit, Free Transform Path. And once you've transformed it, you can also use that to move it. Once you've transformed it, you can click the check mark to, <coughs> to accept it. So this might be good enough for the icon. Uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. If you know any Photoshop, you could play with that. But uh, one thing that I'll, I'll say here, if you do want to make this look a little more interesting, you can go up to the Window menu and select Styles. It opens up a new palette on the side. You select the style and then it'll make that shape possibly a little bit interesting. psychedelic. So you, those, are, those are styles. You get those styles from the window menu. Styles. And this palette here has these styles, but you have more than that because you can go to these to this menu here, this three-line menu, and then say show me glass buttons web styles, photographic effects, abstract. So if I go to abstract, click OK. So I've got a few kind of abstract styles. Yep, so that's going to catch people's attention and they're totally want to download my app. If you want to go back to the default styles, you can click the menu there and go back to Reset Styles, and that'll give you your original ones. Just for fun, I'm going to select this one. It's maybe not the most appropriate, but I kind of like what it looks like. And this is again about uh, 
you're, you're creating an app, great, but it's not just about the programming and all that great stuff. You also have to deal with the visuals, uh, such as these assets. Let me give you a minute or two. Make this icon or any icon. You don't have to use the kids here. You can use anything else. You know, make it yours if you'd like. Um, give you a couple minutes, and then we'll do the export together, and then we'll upload it and all of that. So uh, just work on playing with that just for a bit, and then we'll go on. Yes. Now, if we have the image, here, here's a second. Sure. Now, Photoshop uh, user, what was this for? I got the icon. How do I change things to the style? Do you want to change it like the same style, or do you just want to change it like black color? Black color. Okay. Um, so, you should be able to do it this way. This is a card picker, but this is the still of this picture. All right, so I'm going to move on here unless there's final questions. Again, this is something that we could spend a lot of time on, but again, this is not a Photoshop class and such, and you might not be the most uh, versed in this aspect of things, but this is something that you want, would want to think about, you know, the various assets of, graphical assets of your app. So this, I'm going to say this is good for the moment. Uh, let's go up to File, Save. Just do a regular save to save the PSD file. Um, this is in PSD format. Amazon wants it in PNG or PNG format. So what we'll need to do is go up to the File menu. We'll go to Export and we'll select Save for Web Legacy. This will, I suppose we can also do Export As, uh, but we'll do it this way just like we did last month. We'll go to Save for Web, Handy Keyboard Shortcut Control Alt Shift S, That'll bring us up to this screen here. And the fastest way to do this is you've got a preset at the top right. On the top right, select under preset, ping 24. And that's basically it. It creates a high quality ping file with transparency, which is what Amazon and Google ask for us in this graphic. And since we designed it with an initial size of 512, that, uh, that completes the icon of, uh, of 512. So go ahead and I didn't change anything here except for selecting the preset of ping 24. Then click save and uh, you click that save button. I'm going to save this to my flash drive so I don't lose it. 
to call it wants to call itself app icon. Here uh, I will put app icon 512 px just for me to see that this is the 512 pixel sized version of my apps icon. I'm saving that to my flash drive, giving it a meaningful name. So I'll save that. I'm going to go back to um, Amazon here. Remember, if you didn't make a note of all of these, this is what we're going to create. So I've got the large icon ready. I'm going to go with small, small icon and then the other ones. So we can reuse this same 512 pixel sized one and shrink it down to the 114 pixel size that it wants. Let's go back to File, Export, Save for Web. It should remember that we chose the ping 24 preset, but what we're going to change is down here, image size. It's asking for 114, and it should automatically change width and height, and then it'll shrink it down to that size, which is about 22% of, of our original starting point. Same graphic, we just used Photoshop here to shrink it down for the size that it's asking, 114. So we'll click save. What's that? Oh, um, when I type the width, it doesn't matter, but when I type the width and I press tab to jump to the next box, then it shrinks it, but it will shrink it even if I don't tab it. Then click Save, and we're going to save it again to the flash drive, and I'm going to call this app icon 114px. This is a 114 pixel sized icon. All right, so the next graphic that it's asking for, I'll come back to screenshots in a moment, the next one that it's asking for, recommended, but I'm going to highly recommend it or require it, is 1024 by 500. So that one's a, a rectangular graphic, completely different dimensions than, uh, than what I've got here. And the purpose of this one is it's going to be a banner ad. It's going to be a wide banner. So we're going to have space for our icon, perhaps, and then other text. Other text that catches your attention to, hey, download this great app. So we've got uh, 10, 1024 by 500. This is how we'll do this. This is our square version of it, but I want this rectangular version. So let's go up to the image menu and select duplicate. We're going to leave our square version alone. We'll go to image duplicate so we can make a duplicate to, to alter this one. I already know that this is going to be my 1024 sized one, so I'm going to change this name here, app icon 1024px. So it will make a copy of my existing of my existing um, image, and notice it shows on top here the original tab for app icon and the new one of 1024 which hasn't been saved yet it doesn't have .psd so let's take a moment to save our new one app icon 1024px save as file menu save as I'm not doing export yet it's not the right dimensions in anything like that and I haven't finished designing it so I'll go to file save as it's going to save into my uh, flash drive as .psd, and I'm saving it as app icon 1024.psd. It's my work in progress. Okay, again, so this is going to be a, a banner, a wide kind of image. We need to change the dimensions of this image. So. After we save it, we'll go back to the Image tab and we'll select Canvas Size. 
image size would be to grow or shrink the image to fit certain dimensions. But canvas size would be to add or remove from the image. Uh, so if I wanted to crop out an area, I go to the canvas size and I can crop it down to a certain size. Or if I want to add more width, because right now the width of this is 512. I need to double that to 1024. So I need to add more to the canvas and trim the top and bottom, because I've got 512 at the top and bottom vertically. I need to trim that down to 500. So that's why we would use canvas size. This is about adding or subtracting to the shape of my image. Image size is that it's going to stay basically in proportion and make it larger or smaller, which is not what we want here. We want to change the canvas size. Switch this over to pixels. And Amazon tells us we need 1024 by 500. So what it's going to do is it's going to expand some areas of it. That's what those arrows going out mean. It's going to expand to give us more width. And then it's going to contract. It's going to cut the top and the bottom because we started with 512 and we only need 500. So click OK. It may tell you that you're about to make some changes, some clipping might occur, just click proceed. And so now I've got um, so now I've got this wide canvas. What I want to do is um, put my um, move my icon off a little to the left and I've got some space uh, to write some text, so some you know some marketing text to move this over. I can use the move tool, which is the very first icon up here. This four-headed arrow with the move tool, I can click to move this over. I'll move it over some amount like that. And then I'll switch over to the text tool, the horizontal type tool. It's got a T, so I can write some text. I'm going to click, click that tool. This gives us various options at the top. You know, fonts and all of that, I'm not going to set that yet. I'm going to click, just, uh, just click somewhere there. And as I start typing, well, that's going to be really small text, actually. maybe 16 pixels, 48. This is something that you're going to experiment with. Um, I'm going to just give an idea of possibly what to write here. You can make it up or, or whatever, but I'm going to say uh, my SDCE, uh, the unofficial SDCE app. And here maybe I'll just write something like uh, keep up to date with the latest classes. Save a schedule. Just writing something. Again, think about it as a banner ad. And uh, you can make it as complex as you'd like. Save a schedule and get directions to campus. This is just like uh, Word to a degree where you can <coughs> select the, the text and maybe change a font. Maybe I don't want such a simple font. I have a variety of fonts to choose from. You can select individual lines you can select individual lines to edit those separately, like maybe change the name of the app to a larger size and leave the other lines the same.
So we won't spend a lot of time on this. This is obviously another thing that um, you can work on. to make it perfect. I'll just give you a quick moment to uh, write something and choose a font or something. And we will do the same thing here in a moment. We will export it. And we'll have another one of these assets finished and then we'll go on with the other ones, like the screenshot. And we'll be close to, to getting that done. Right, so wherever you're at right here, let's uh, let's go on. You can further refine this later, but I'm gonna save. Just do a regular save to my file, and then I'll go to File, Export, Save for Web. Um, here, Amazon. They told us what dimension stuff. They didn't mention transparency, however. These others said with transparency. So that leads me to believe I can do it with or without transparency. If I didn't want transparency, I can easily turn it off here and I'll get a plain white background. Or if I wanted a different color, I can select the color here. change that. So you can select transparency or not and um, color if you'd like. But just to confirm the size of my banner is 1024 by 500. Let's go ahead and save. And this is going to save as app icon 1024. So go ahead and save that. Okay, so we've got uh, a small icon, large icon, a promotional image. Let's go on to screenshots. Any, uh, any questions so far? Screenshots, we need to change tactics from Photoshop. So I'm going to look at screenshots now. Uh, screenshots, we can do it a couple different ways. Uh, we can uh, run our project on a real device, on a virtual device, in Google Chrome. We just need some way to capture the screenshot of our, of our app. We could also, what we could also do conceivably is if we've got a real device, we can do the screenshot feature, which is if you hold power and volume up, it takes a screenshot of whatever you're looking at. We could make a screenshot that way, but then we have to get it off of the phone onto the computer. So we've got lots of ways to make a screenshot. Let's, let's explore a couple of them, depending on, on what you've got. 
Uh, let's try it this way first. We're going to use, remember a while ago we talked about Android Monitor. There's this app that comes built in with, with our software, the Monitor, which lets us uh, monitor various aspects of our device and take screenshots. That'll also work on a, on a virtual device. So let's uh, remind you where that's at. Go ahead and minimize everything and let's open Computer Window. Open the local disk C. We're going to go to the main hard drive. We will then go to Program Files, x86. Android. Android SDK Windows. Tools. And then you should see Monitor. Dot bat. Double click that, and a quirk that I notice that happens is it looks like nothing ever happens, but that's usually because this pops up, but it pops up behind everything, and I'm like, nothing's happening. And I double click monitor again and again and again, nothing's happening. Well, oftentimes, especially on our labs, it seems this comes up here behind everything. So move your screens out of the way, something should pop up that says, thanks for using the Android SDK. It should be somewhere under your windows. Notice it doesn't even show up in the taskbar. It's like a phantom app that's not there yet. So don't rely on finding it down on the taskbar. Move that out of the way. And here it's basically saying, uh, thanks for using the software. Would you like to send stats to Google, yes or no? It doesn't matter for us, so I'll just click proceed. And then eventually, you will get the Android monitor, and you will get then listed down here on the taskbar. You will have an app that's running. Did everyone get their device monitor running? <coughs> I've got my app running on my real device. If you don't have anything here under device, you'll need to do Taco to either run it on a virtual device or a real device. And then we're going to take a screenshot. Um, let me uh, answer your question in just one moment. There, Ed. Uh, I'll answer your question in one moment. If you get to the screen, what you want to do is select your, your device and click the screenshot icon, which is right there. And the purpose of this, I'm going to give you a moment to run your app on your device and get to, uh, get to some, uh, you know, get to some... Um, representative screens of your app. Remember, Amazon is asking for 3 to 10 screenshots. So go to different screens of your app and save at least 3 screenshots of what you feel will entice people to download your app. So take a moment to do that on your own. You know, I, I did it. Uh, I forgot to say for people to do it, but that's what you need. Let me load it onto your device or the virtual device. Yeah, the usual taco run. Yeah, exactly. Taco build, taco run device. <coughs> Yes. 
see in uh, the cloud. I haven't run in the cloud, so that's what I see here. Uh, where is Japan? So, uh, but you did the work with this one. Yeah, I think that's it. Just thank you. But I've been lying the whole thing. No, it'll, it should still let us launch the monitor. Let's open the folder where you've got your. Um, Suppose I use your PRs. Yeah, copy it out of my folder because we can't run top of it. So, which is the. Uh, which one? The We're going to need to go with the one of the last date, which is the 19th. This one? WW3? Oh, no, that's the WW3. Uh, you know what's the one? Uh, copy 412 to your desktop. I can copy it to the hard drive with this. So I don't have a one hour to do it. So what I could do later is replace the computer with the view with this. Yeah, just okay. take the thing, just move this whole item in here into the when you copy it and then run Taco like you've done before. Okay. And then when you've got Taco on, on the device, then you would like to monitor as you get the screen shots. Thank you. 
Was the whole I the copy over and then copy the new moment also and we need to be the new moment. Yeah. So you said the middle is the nineteen. So in that change the old one to be moved to be we need to. And in my version, we just call it the middle. Okay. Yeah.
maybe because I'm too far from this computer. Maybe because we, it's not too complicated to index. So that's why maybe it's confused. There's an index inside of 412. And OK, maybe, maybe get rid of the loop the, 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 uh, the thing now. Just to meet that whole loop. OK, I can, I can move it up here. Just keep it. How to do it is that principle, we can go back to this monitor app, and then uh, click on the camera right here, yes. so we capture, click on that, and then what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to wait a moment, but then it's going to look, it's going to show you a picture right there, uh, and then you're going to click save, to save three screen shots of your Okay, yeah. so whenever I like to see a screen, I like to create it. Yes. And then next one, it doesn't change automatically. You have to click refresh to show you the newest version of what's on the device. So let's go back to the device. <coughs> it's already showing it here. Click on finish. And so when you like, when you see a screen that you like, you refresh and then you save. Mm -hmm. Refresh one more time. So um, you're gonna have problems with this app, but just go ahead and save the screenshots. Save it. Drive or desktop, and those screenshots are available on Amazon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Think are you going to talk about where that save goes? So. Yes. So I'm uh, loading my device, and I'm going to click save. This file name is just fine, and I will save these on my flash drive. I want three screenshots of me going to different representative screens of my of my app and then you just want to save them. Yes, Lawrence. Can you save your uh, Photoshop image? Sure. All of them or the original Photoshop? I want the deep photo. Okay, yes, let me... Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm going to save my my graphics. I have a question. <coughs> In what file do we need the our splash screen image? What's the um component that's not right? The place where you're saving your splash screens is inside of the app. Um, I know it's the image folder, but where do we call it? It is in the config file. In the config XML file, there's a spot here where it's talking about um, where it's talking about splash screens. Um, name Android platform splash. So at about line 71, it's telling you your screenshots. Screenshot and they do have their own names like that. So check line 71. 
Uh, so the point of this is we're creating these screenshots as representative examples of our app. So it would be nice to pull up, for example, the map. I'm going to oh, go to the map, get the driving directions. And so, actually that's kind of anticlimactic. Take a big old U-turn. Uh, so I'm just going to save a screenshot then of the map screen, and I only need three minimum of these, so I'll, I'll save those. These names are fine, so I'm saving that. I'll provide my screenshots also, and maybe one more where I'm doing these classes, where I'm saving classes. So what I did here was I just saved, <coughs> saved one class. Uh, you can't quite see my screen small, but I'm uh, I added a I added a class and it's listed down there in the table. So I'm going to save that, and that's enough for my screenshots. There, I'm going to um, use those three screenshots. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a copy of my screenshots if, you've, if you'd like them, but if you did customize your app uh, to, to give it your own style, my, uh, my screenshots probably won't look so good on yours. Um, but anyway, in the network folder now, I, I added the app icons, the three app icon pings, and I added my device screenshots. On my particular one. I have a real device that I can test on, so I took those screenshots. And um, if you don't have a real device, you're going to use a virtual device. But I forgot to say this caveat right here. Uh, the screenshots are saying you need these screenshot sizes. And if your virtual device, if you're using the, if you've been, if you're using the virtual device that we've been using the whole course, you know, that low quality 3.2 inch device, that's only 320 by 240 or something. So that virtual device is going to be, is not going to create screen sub, screenshots large enough. What I'm saying here is if you are going to use a virtual device, you want to use the virtual device called uh, Nexus One. Um, so when you're creating your virtual device, We were using the device definition of 3.2 QVGA. Notice it's saying this is going to be a 320 by 480 sized dimension. Too small for what Amazon is asking. So any other one that's as large as it's asking is working, is going to work. And it looks like the Nexus One might be a good one. It says right there, it'll be 480 by 800. That's what Amazon is asking for. What you could do is, if you've got these screenshots are not, and they're not the right dimensions, you can still pull them up into Photoshop, resize them a bit, save them, and then out they're the right sizes that Amazon needs. Yes? What size do we use for this? I'm just concerned about this. Uh, Let me confirm here on the ones that I've saved. Uh, this is saying 540 by 960. So it's 960 by 540. So the one that we created is larger. Uh, I'll check in a moment if it will accept this size. So if it doesn't, we can just resize it in Photoshop to the size that it's asking for us. Or it might shrink it down for us. So I'll check that in a moment. Can we also rename those files, like put an SS1 and an SS2 in front of each device maybe? Sure. It's not going to care about these these names of these icons actually. So sure, you can put that so you can tell what they are. Uh, 
Now, you probably will get logged out by now if you logged into Amazon at the start of the day and now you're about to upload your your uh, icons, it probably logged you out. So before you try to upload your your icons, just click save on the corner there and if it suddenly says log in well log in and then we can add our icons <coughs> I'm gonna check first before I get too far I'm gonna try to upload the screenshots and see if this one that is not the exact dimensions that it's asking for I'm gonna check if it'll accept it Fail to upload image, invalid screenshot size, the uploaded image is 540 by 960, acceptable dimensions are 800 by 480. Okay, so if you've got this Moto E, like me, it's not the right dimensions. So I'm going to need to open them in Photoshop, and resize them a bit in Photoshop, and then they'll be the right dimensions that Amazon is asking for. So that means... to open the screenshot. Yeah, I'll do mine and then I'll put my copies in the network folder if you guys want them. Eight hundred by four eighty. Hmm. Image campus, right? It's not going to be as as straightforward. Unfortunately, we have to change image size and image canvas. If you do image canvas, it's going to crop it and delete parts of it. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go up to image, image size, and then put the width of that to 480. I have 53 extra pixels, which I need to crop out, although I could turn off this lock and then force it to those dimensions. But it'll then look distorted maybe, so I'm going to go with a width of 480. That was image, image size. And then I'll go to canvas size. And say that 800. So cropped it like that, which I still don't like how that looks. So um, I guess let's see what it is. What does it look like if I do force it? I'll go to image size. I'll turn off that lock, and I'll put 480 by 800. Just before and after. It's not so bad actually. That might be the best way to do it. So here's what I would say then. We'll go back to image, image size, turn off this lock. Right now it's active. So if you change one dimension, the other one changes. Turn off the lock. There's no more line there. Turn off the lock, and we're going to say what it's asking for us 480 by 800. <coughs> And then on this, I will just uh, go to File, Save. Just a plain old save. I don't have to do that export because it's already a pink file. I don't have to do export, save for web. It's already a, a ping file at this point. So I'll just do Save. And that's one down. So I'll do the other two, and then I'll put it into the network folder. Question? So sometimes people might accidentally save it as a JPEG. Hmm. And if you do that, every time you save it as a JPEG, again, you lose quality. So keeping it in a ping is really helpful. 
Yeah, and that's what uh, it's asking for us here. On most of these, it's asking for pings, but good point. This one could be saved as a JPEG, and it would take it as a JPEG, but it would lose quality every time we save. So when we worked previously, we talked about pings and that we want to keep using pings. All right, so this is my other screenshot. I'm going to resize this. <coughs> All right, so I shrunk these down to the right dimensions. I'm going, to put a, I'm going to put a copy of them into the network folder. And I'm going to rename these SS screenshots. So if you have the other ones without SS, you want to delete those. You want these ones with SS. Now I'll go back to Amazon. I will click the upload image box for my screenshot. It liked that one. I'll add the next one. And the third one. So it's going to show three screenshots for people when they are going to download my app. I can do up to ten of them. Maybe you do want more screenshots depending on your app. You can rearrange them. They'll be listed in this order on the App Store. You can drag them to rearrange them. I've got that large icon to upload. And a small icon. And the promotional image. Nice. I'm going to save that. We'll take a break and then I'll come back and talk about videos. And then uh, we'll have an app ready to publish. I'll save that for the moment. I do have now all the green check marks, but we're still going to wait for one more thing. 7.30, we'll take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 7.40. We'll talk about videos because videos could be nice. That's a way to market your app even more. And I'll show you how to make videos about, about your app. We'll be back at 7.30.